Hi, I'm Nick Ellis. I'm the founder of MedLife. If you're interested in coming on one of our mobile clinics, check out this video and uh, check out the website at medlifeweb.org. I'm Carly, I'm Brigade Chair at UPenn, and I just got off a plane, a seven hour flight from Atlanta. Hi, I'm Allie, President of Penn Medlife. And I'm Adam, the Assistant President <laughs> at Penn, the Penn Chapter. We just got to Lima and we're stoked. There was a thunderstorm in Mexico City, so we were stuck there for six hours. Excited to get the week started. Ready to help yeah. some people out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not tired at all. I'm excited. Definitely. Something new. See something new, experience a different culture, and hopefully get to do things we haven't gotten the opportunity to do before. And hopefully have a great time. Yes. <laughs> and get to put the bags on top of the bus so hopefully they don't fall off on the drive over and we're always going to squeeze in there, all 20 of us, so it's going to be a fun ride. So it's about 3.30 in the morning, we just got here to our um, place, unloading all the bags. Um, it was a very cozy ride here, definitely um, got to know each other on the way. Um, and um, yeah, so definitely getting ready to sleep. Very tired, it's been a long, long day. I uh, just got to our hostel room. There's eight of us in one room together. Hopefully no one random's gonna be put in here in the extra beds. Um, it's gonna be fun, like slumber party back when we went to summer camp, so it was last. Hey, we're all walking down to check out the city. This looks nothing like any American city I've ever been to. Um, kind of reminds me of some European cities, but I mean, definitely a different experience. Oh, it's really interesting. There's so many casinos downtown. Um, there were two papers. It has a lot of culture, and it's interesting to see it. Yeah. Marco Mar and we're at a mall that's right off of the coast. It's so beautiful you can see the Pacific Sea, the ocean and um, yeah it almost seems like we're on like at a mall on the California coast and like what is there KFC and Dunkin Donuts and it's like shopping in the USA. It is and it's really nice. Tomorrow we're going about 10 minutes away and um, I hear that it's going to be a really big contrast and I'm so interested to see the difference between these two locations. Yeah.
Huh. Um, I guess poverty is not having money. Um. Um. I guess the best way to describe poverty is the lack of having resources. I mean, you're, you're poor, but the problem is that you're stuck in it. You're poorer than poor. You can't get out of it. When you don't know where your next meal is coming from and you don't have a place to stay. You don't really get an equal opportunity in health or education. Living every day when you're not sure if you're going to get food, if you're going to have a roof over your house, if you have clean clothes, shoes and it affects all aspects of your life, socially, your education, everything. I guess a lot of people think of poverty as lacking money or shelter or food and stuff. It is all those things, but I think also poverty could be lacking um, like political freedom and a social network and just um, anything really that makes, um, that keeps you from fulfill having like a fulfilled life. Um, my current role in poverty um, and what I hope to do uh, over the next week, I think, is to get rid of some of those barriers and use the resources that I have to give other people resources. Uh, I'm not too sure, but I'm sure I've actually probably helped cause some of it. My role in poverty is to reverse it, <laughs> to fix it. Try to spread the wealth. Just not ignore the problem um, because I ignoring it, it's never going to go away. Be aware of it and to be aware of the fact that I'm in a position to help change it. I feel like it's our responsibility, those of us who are lucky enough to be born into those capabilities and have the means to support ourselves, to um, give back and try to make sure that everybody has uh, that same opportunity, those same abilities. My time, my strength, my money, to, m to help them. Make an impact in their life maybe, to inspire them. Well, I have to understand what it is. I have to meet it face to face. To do as the most that I can to help. I can't imagine doing anything other than trying to alleviate the needs of the people who for whatever reason or another can't, you know, don't have access to the health care that every human being deserves. Hey guys, we're out here first day, we're about to head out. And uh, we're eating breakfast. Pretty much every hostel you go to, you're gonna find bread, this awesome strawberry jam, some eggs with ham, and some homemade, well, home squeezed juice. I'm actually, not usually a big egg person, but this is really good. So, uh, excited for the day. The tea's really good too. <laughs> Um, we're looking forward to getting down on the bus in a little bit and getting our hands dirty today. Um, I don't really know what to expect, but we're all really excited. Uh, last night we had a meeting and we got these really cool MedLife scrubs. So we're excited to look like a team and start to get working. We're, we're leaving uh, Lima, Peru on our way to one of the uh, local rural areas and as you can see from outside it's uh, it's very desolate very poor in these areas uh, very different from the mainland of the city the heart of the city where we're staying um, it's a little shocking there's a lot of trash on the ground um, a lot of poverty so we're, we'll, uh, we'll uh, hopefully get to the clinic soon and uh, get to work setting it up and get ready for the day Um, behind me there's uh, a lot of fog today so you can't really see very well but um, just the, uh, the poor communities are all over the place. It's just the, we're on the top of a mountain right now and below us uh, is just full of villages similar to the one we're in today. Uh, I think tomorrow or in the future uh, you'll get to see a better view but um, yeah it's something that a lot of Americans just uh, you know aren't aware of or don't realize uh, in their daily lives just how many people live in poverty uh, all over the world and conditions similar to this are uh, a lot of times a lot worse. Um, so yeah, it's something that you sort of take, take for granted and uh, don't realize how fortunate you actually are. 
Hey guys, it's day one, uh, 8 a.m. on Monday morning. We're here in Villa Maria, which is one of the Pueblos Jóvenes on the outskirts of Lima. We've just arrived and um, all the students are setting up the clinic, trying to, you know, uh, get used to our setup here. Um, basically what's going to happen today is the people from this community are going to come visit um, the mobile clinic. Our goal is to kind of bring them a basic primary care uh, medical setting um, because they don't have any other um, uh, medical services here in this area, um, not anywhere close. Um, so basically people will kind of file through, um, through triage where their vital signs are taken. They'll get a dentist visit, um, a doctor visit, and we also have a gynecologist here. And if there are any problems, we, can, we have medicine with us which we prescribe, and we also aid in follow-up care after the mobile clinic leaves. Uh, myself and the other MedLife employees will follow up with with all patients we visit who need who need additional care. We're at the local primary school in Via Maria. Me and Carlos came up here to collect all the school children and bring them down to the clinic. Unfortunately, on cold days um, such as today, a lot of parents don't even send their kids to school. Um, so it looks like only about a you know a quarter of the total the total students are here right now. But we'll bring them down to the clinic and hopefully as the day warms up, uh, more students will, will come through. Welcome to the toothbrushing station where this morning we are going to be helping these kids brush their teeth uh, with both toothpaste and fluoride. So we have a station set up with toothbrushes, toothpaste, fluoride, cups of water, and they get to keep their toothbrushes, which is pretty exciting. I'm here at the triage center right now. We're taking uh, vital signs, so they're um, the patient's height, weight, blood pressure, temperature, and um, just um, filling in the primary paperwork before they go see the doctor, the dentist, and the pharmacy for any medications that they might need. And um, yeah, so this, um, this is the first step station before um, all the patients go and get their medical help. Uh, so right now we're uh, seeing patients here with the doctor. Um, the current patients are having issues with uh, stomach pains and some throat troubles. Uh, also, the little Calm child has a, has a little, little cold, yeah. Um, so the physician is prescribing some medicine for them, and they will then uh, go to the pharmacy, which is directly across from us, and uh, get medication so hopefully they can feel better. Uh, this woman and her child just came from the station over there, and um, she has two prescriptions coming in. One of them is uh, this one, <laughs> which we just give them the whole bottle. Um, she's getting two milligrams uh, twice a day until this bottle is gone, and hopefully that'll help her out. Uh, so that's what's going on over here <laughs> at the pharmacy. Uh, I'm working with uh, La Dentista Kathy right now and uh, she was explaining to us all the tools that we have to use and I was actually really surprised to see that we actually have a surgical needle and thread because she would be doing extractions here and she was explaining that uh, the people are really poor so they don't care take care of that teeth and they get cavities and infections so um, a lot of times it's better to just take out the tooth completely. So, so far we've helped uh, two patients, one little girl who's actually scared to open her mouth but um, just we do what we can, but it's good to just be able to learn and see what we can do. One, the biggest difference to, to these people is, that, is the poverty. One of these kids could be genius, they could be the next Einstein, but they can't get any help. They have no way to, they don't even have enough money to make it on the bus to the hospital. Alberto was telling me they have, it's a two dollars for, two soul, two soul for a bus ride and they may have one. That's all they have. So I just saw, we just saw a lady who has been throwing up for about four years from a gastro and she hasn't seen anyone from. No one's come out here.
If I were to give advice to anyone thinking about joining MedLife, I would definitely say just come with no expectations, you know, just completely open to everything and open to new. And I mean, I just definitely could not have imagined any of this. And it's just so incredible just like seeing all these people lining up to come in to actually, and I actually feel like I'm, you know, doing something, like I'm contributing to all of this. And it's so great that these people can finally get, you know, medical care and just, it's really different than anything I would have expected. So um, we just finished our morning of seeing patients. Um, and as you can see, the fog has cleared up behind us. Um, looking out onto the streets, you can see some women are uh, cleaning, sweeping the, uh, the mud streets. They're full of, uh, it's a lot of water on the streets and things which uh, are covered with um, feces. People uh, don't have, you know, plumbing and things aren't as well constructed here. The infrastructure is very weak. Um, so a lot of the running water and things that you see are contaminated with a lot of bacteria and um, dog feces and things because there are a lot of stray dogs running around and I guess just the uh, the general hygienic practices here are not you know, the standard you expect you know living in America and such and um, we, we help the kids teach them how to brush their teeth which is very important a lot of the older members of the community have uh, very bad poor teeth which is leading to um, dental problems and mouth problems which uh, the dentist has been working hard on today. Um, but yeah, just general hygiene practices here. We're trying to teach them uh, better ways to take care of themselves and make sure that uh, they prevent future bacterial infections from the, the dirty water and uh, yeah, other issues, plumbing issues in the, in the country. Um, but yeah, we just we finished our lunch. We're going to head out and do a, uh, a community walk to get a better sense of what how these living conditions actually affect their lives, um, after which we'll uh, we'll take the bus back to Lima. <laughs> Seeing this, I guess right now it hasn't really hit me yet. I'm just kind of taking it all in, and um, but it is really a stark difference between um, the Lima, Peru that we saw earlier on the trip, and then today on the outskirts. I don't know if you guys saw today those big blue trucks, tank trucks driving around. Those are those tanks are filled with water and those are owned by private companies who sell water to people here and they fill each each family has a tank like this and the truck will come by and fill up the tank. Um, that water costs like 10 times the cost of what it would be if the city provided water. Um, and it's also because it's privately owned and there's no regulation. It's usually like chemically contaminated and there's no safeguards whatsoever. So these people are drinking bad water and they're paying 10 times more than they should and that's you know just one clear reason why we need to kind of take the steps to bring um, bring those basic water services. Okay it's the morning of day two and we're on the bus we're all pretty tired and um, yeah we're gonna go split up into two groups and one of us is gonna go do the mobile clinic and one group's gonna go build stairs and should be fun. 
So it's 8.30 a.m. on day two. We've just arrived to Cerro Pukio, we'll, where we'll be setting up our mobile clinic today. Um, in a little bit, I'm going to take six students with me and head to these hills over here where we have a stair construction pr project going on and we're going to be working um, with some community members to, to pour some new stairs. We give aid and go on these um, mobile clinics. We're kind of like patching a wall in the dam, a little hole in the dam. But the whole point is you have to analyze what's the root cause of the problem. So um, that senior right there in the green, uh, this all started because of her. Because as you can see, there aren't many stairs here. It rains a lot, there are mudslides. And one day she slipped and fell and she had a premature birth. And then Nick decided that the root cause of that is that there's a lack of stairs. He looked up that the cost was only $200 and decided that, you know, if we spend $200 and build these stairs, it can, you know, prevent and fix the problem and create a sustainable solution. So this is a large part of what MedLife is doing here to create a real solution, a solution that lasts. Because mobile clinics help, but when you do something like this, these stairs will last a long time and really go towards making a sustainable um, fix for the problem. <laughs> Living in our own world, um, usually us middle class um, citizens, it's sort of, we kind of live in this bubble and I think the poor experience things that we don't ever get the opportunity to experience, you know, living really life in its just this basic form, just having food, shelter and water. We live with such luxuries that we don't actually get to um, to see what it is, you know, how life would be without those things. And so I think listening to the poor is really, really important. It really, um, I guess, makes you really think about what is important in life and also just that there's so many people in the world that don't even have, you know, food, water, and shelter, the very basic necessities to just to survive while, you know, the rest of the world has so many things just ex in excess. You know, I think traditionally we just Americans just come in, tell them, oh, these are your problems, this is how we're gonna fix them. And oftentimes it doesn't work. There's a human element involved and these are real people with real lives, real culture. And then they wouldn't like someone to just come in, barge and just tell them what to do. It's much more important to listen to them, ask them what they would like us to help them to do, and then build a true relationship with these people in order to make something happen. So not only is it a better attitude approach, it, but in the end it's probably the best solution to build, to make the quickest amount of progress. You want to have uh, people that uh, the locals trust, and that's why you have to listen to the poor. A lot of fun getting dirty, watching, mixing up lots of stuff, and hauling rocks and throwing them into a pit, which will soon be a wall. And um, yeah. Definitely an interesting experience. <laughs> so we've been working for a while now. I'm pretty tired, pretty hungry. The uh, local people have prepared some food. I think it's chicken soup, Peruvian style, so I'm pretty excited. Uh, we're going to be heading down this ladder right here. So yeah, as you can tell, it's still pretty steep, you know, not too many stairs yet, which is what we were working on, but we're heading down there to go in someone's house and have a good meal. Right now we are in the house of Senora Chai and um, we're having some traditional Peruvian food which is, tastes really great and smells amazing. Um, it is um, rice, there's potatoes and um, some chicken and chicken soup, um, sopa de pollo and it's delicious and it's really great to experience you know more of in um, how that real culture is like not just we're eating at a restaurant or anything we're actually at um, a person's house and having food so it's uh, definitely a very very um, amazing experience. Bravo, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Hey, we just finished our medical brigade for today. We were supposed to run until 5, but then uh, we actually reached our max at around 170 people. But uh, we were starting from probably around over there, and then we have walked all the way around this entire city. And we're heading towards where we're building stairs, and we're passing out flyers, um, broadcasting on Saturday our mega brigade. So, um, yeah, we've walked quite a distance. The roads are really sandy. My feet are all dirty. There's been dogs everywhere and so much trash, actually. But um, they're broadcasting. We're almost like a parade. Um, for front and back, people are have megaphones just telling people about the, the free medical care that we're going to be bringing on Saturday. We're absolutely exhausted, but we just filled this entire huge hole with a mountain of sand from down there. We feel pretty good. I helped, I helped a lot. I helped the most. <laughs> now that we have a retention wall, which is great. <laughs> Half of us are going to stairs, half of us are going to a new clinic, and um, that's the agenda for today. We're here at our third medical brigade at Andre Abelino Casagres, and um, we're hoping for a good turnout. Hopefully, we'll get enough patients, a lot more maybe than what we had in the past few days, and um, help out a lot of the community today. I mean, I think the p in terms of healthcare and what people have, um, yes, that's what I expected. But some of the locations we've been to, I just don't understand. I mean, how they can live here and survive and. You know, every day they smile, they're happy, and I mean, I know they have a lot of stuff going on underneath, but I'm pretty impe impressed by their heart, and I'm glad I'm here. Okay, so right now we're in the midst of setting up a mobile clinic, and that's really the medicine aspect of MedLife, but I just wanted to mention that the education component is also really important because it's more sustainable and it helps um, promote healthy living and healthy lifestyles. So when we come back for the clinics, we can ultimately try to reduce the amount of illness and disease we're seeing. Um, just for an example, in America, my education, I was brought up and in fifth grade I had sex ed. When I was four years old, I was already brushing my teeth by myself. Um, and these are just things we take for granted on, on a day-to-day -day basis and are really crucial in, in teaching someone about healthy living and healthy lifestyles. I think a lot of people back on the state side would find it really surprising that um, the people that were helping here today have maybe never gotten their blood pressure checked or never had their temperature taken or even don't brush their teeth every day just because I think that a lot of us take things for granted. Um, we have a really great health system and they don't have that here and I think that people need to realize that in other parts of the world that um, we should take it upon ourselves to actually share what we know because a lot of people here don't really know a lot about how to take care of themselves on a daily basis and um, it's a great thing to share with people. So yeah, we just finished up another day at the clinic. It was a good day. We're going to go check out the people working on the stairs now. So the rest of the brigade and the camera crew just got here, but the other half of us, we've been working on these stairs all day, and we made some good progress. It's the first day there's been sun, so we were pretty excited about that, and we got to hang out with a bunch of the people from the community, which was great to get to know them and talk to them. I'm sure you're probably wondering what this delicious looking food is. It's actually really good. And um, we think it's called a granadito or a granito, something that starts with a G. Um, it's a special type of fruit that's locally grown here in Peru. Um, it has two layers of protection so that animals and stuff can't get into it. First layer is the orange. First layer is the orange. Underneath that you have this white second level of defense right here. Yes. So do you break through. Oh yeah. You get to the delicious seeds. Uh, personally, it reminds me of caviar. Um, seeds are a little crunchy. It's a little. It's not as sweet as most other fruits you would expect. Would you agree, Brian? I was actually thinking of Skittles. Like Skittles. Taste the rainbow, my friends. Uh, 
Hey guys, this is uh, the second day of our kind of community development project where we're building stairs here. I've had um, seven students uh, with me here all day um, working on finishing this stair project. Uh, right now everyone from the clinic is here and we need to move a bunch of rocks from down this way up, uh, up to where we're making a wall. So all the students are going to make a big chain and we'll be, we'll be passing rocks. One of the things I really like about MedLife is that uh, we try to address more than just, you know, providing a temporary medical relief for the, uh, the patients here in Peru. Um, you know, we're, we're interested in more sustainable development projects and trying to make sure that they can lead a healthier, happier life in general. Uh, so when we heard in June of a woman who was five months pregnant and gave birth uh, to her child four months premature because she fell down uh, one of these steep slopes. Um, we decided to help out and uh, create steps uh, for this community. So for the past two months, MedLife has been helping out building different sets of staircases. It's a, it's a, very great, it's a great project, very worthwhile, and hopefully it will make a difference in the lives of the people for generations to come. So we're doing a lot of these sustainable development projects, um, but I think one of the things MedLife realizes is education really is the key to uh, break out of the cycle of poverty for these communities and uh, provide better opportunities for you know, employment in the future, uh, especially for the young kids. So uh, MedLife has been building schools in the hopes of bettering the lives for the kids in the future. And uh, I mean, in the, in the current age now, in the 21st century, with things like computers and the internet, uh, just the globalization, becoming essential really to have some type of education, understand how to use those tools to be successful in the workforce. And um, I think MedLife is providing a great service for that and trying to help people in these communities. Even if uh, you know a lot of them, when they're 12 or 13, they have to come back and like, work for their families. Um, just the opportunity to go to school for a few years and, and learn these trades will help them immeasurably in the future. Ciao, ciao, adio. Um, I don't think people should be deterred from joining MedLife if they're not pre-med. Um, I myself am a poli-sci major and I decided to join MedLife because I have a real passion for just Latin American culture. I've traveled other countries before on other service trips, you know, making houses, making community centers, building stairs, and MedLife does differ in that uh, it is mobile clinics, but it's also, you know, trying to work on sustainable projects like making stairs in the community and people here, although most of them are pre-med, um, do have a passion for helping others and that's why they're here ultimately and you know they just use the medical clinics as a means to reach the goals of helping people here in Peru. So that's why I'm here just to contribute and this is a way which I saw I could contribute. Well I think we need to show that we can actually make something happen, we can make a difference, and I, want, I guess it's a really good way of seeing people from other cultures, like, and firsthand, and I don't know, I think it's just a really great way of opening, I guess, your world view. It's an experience, and you can always learn from experiences. So we are here. Um, levanta ahí para talla, por favor. Gracias. Doing our fourth brigade. Uh, fourth clinic. We've seen close to a thousand patients so far. Gracias. Adentro para medicina, sí. And uh, it's been great. We've seen a lot of women, a lot of children. Um, especially today, I don't know, maybe about 100 kids or so, uh, 150 patients in, the, in all. And uh, it's not even lunchtime yet, so hopefully we'll see a lot more people in the future uh, before we go to the stairs and help with the steps. So it's day four of our mobile clinic. Um, it looks like everything got wrapped up in Via Maria a little early, so all the kids came down here to uh, continue working on this um, on our stair project and we're kind of working overtime right now to make sure that this third staircase gets filled um, before our big uh, medical campaign here on Saturday 
And tomorrow we're going to have a kind of a day of rest for all the brigade participants. So we're going to go to the center of Lima, stroll around, get some culture, a little bit of rest before our big day on Saturday. So it's 6 p.m. right now. We've been working all day on this stair project. It's the final day and we have to get it done right now. Um, so we were going to go back to the hostel, but then we realized that the community was going to stay here and keep working until, you know, midnight to get this done. So we had a vote. We decided that we were going to stay here and try and get, it, get, this, get this done over the next couple hours, and then we'll go back to the hotel. And, you know, all the participants unanimously decided that we were going to stay here and, and get this done right now. <laughs> So we're still here working on the stairs here in Las Minas. It's a bit of a race against time right now because it's getting dark pretty quickly and I don't know if you can see there's some lights in this community over here but right here in Las Minas there are no lights so once it gets dark uh, this work is going to get a lot harder. So we're pouring the water right now trying to get the cement mixed and we're moving as fast as we can to get this done. <laughs> Well, we were hoping to finish uh, before dark, but unfortunately that wasn't the case. So we're here working late with uh, the Peruvians trying to finish their uh, their last staircase uh, for the week. Carlos is helping us out here, building some lights so we can try to see what's going on. Uh, hopefully we'll be done soon so we can get out of here and get some dinner. But, uh, you know, we won't leave until the last step is, is built. So let's get back to work. So we're just fi getting finished right now. It's been a long day at work. We've been working all night and we're just all, almost there. Um, this is the first time MedLife has done something like this and you know we didn't really think that we would be able to get this whole set of stairs done in one day but here we are we committed ourselves to getting the job done and we're just there. So we just finished completely. Everyone's on a high note right now. Um, we're about to take off, but people are just feeling good about the work we did. And the way that kind of this group is bonded with the community, working together like this is something that I've never seen before. And I've been down here for a year. And it's kind of just a special feeling right now. So today is our day off and we're going to go to Alberto, favorite seafood restaurant, and then afterwards we're going to get a chance to tour parts of Lima that we have not yet seen. First we're going to go to a market where we can buy souvenirs for our friends and family, and then to a park that's supposed to be really pretty with lots of fountains, and then a very apparently Peruvian district. So we're all really stoked. We just got to central Lima, uh, we're standing in like what looks like uh, kind of like a town square. It looks a lot like Europe. I'm pretty excited to go exploring around on our free day. Um, so we'll see what's up around here.
Uh, so we're walking through the Plaza de Armas in the center of Lima and it's pretty cool. It's very modern. Totally awesome day. So the water park is amazing. There's a lot of interactive things to do. Um, one of them was this tunnel, which was sweet. It was so much fun. And we're about to go and see the light show, which we're all really excited for. It's a little bit after 7 right now. Uh, we're a little bit late for the brigade. Uh, we had some issues this morning. The showers just completely stopped working. Poor Neil got caught with all the soap on him. Uh, and the breakfast was served a little bit late. So uh, hopefully we'll get there rel relatively soon. Uh, I'm really excited for this brigade. Hopefully we'll see up to 1,000 patients. And uh, Nick Ellis will be there. So it'll be great to finally meet him. Uh, yeah, so off we go. Nick Ellis, the MedLife CEO and founder, is coming down. Um, He's doing his surgical residency at Dartmouth right now, so he hasn't been here this past week, but he's coming down just for the weekend to uh, meet with the brigade, to talk with them a little bit, and to see this big event that we're hosting in Las Minas. So we're all looking forward to that. So right now, you can see we're setting up the tent over here. Uh, we got our big white MedLife tent, MedVita. Uh, trying to separate the poles right now by size so we can get this thing set up and get our day started. You can see the Ministry of Health has already has like 20 tents up, so they're getting everything's getting ready. It's going to be a big long day. Hopefully, see about thousand or two thousand people today. Morning, everybody. So it's about 7:30. Uh, I'm finally here in Pamplona. It's been a long trip. Yesterday, uh, drove down to Boston, caught a plane from Boston to Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Then got into Lima, we were a little bit late, didn't get until about 11, 12 o'clock at night. Got up about uh, 5.30 this morning, and as you can see, we, uh, this is the mega event. We have uh, probably 20, 25 doctors, dentists, uh, dentistry students showing up. We have political leaders, leaders from the Ministry of Health that are going to be here today. We got all the students from uh, MedLife that have been on the uh, mobile clinic just recently, setting up our tent here. Um, they're projected to be hundreds if not a thousand people coming today. Uh, it should be pretty incredible. Um, so let's check it out, see what's going on today.
We have a bunch of NGOs collaborating. Uh, it's actually really crazy. It's awesome to see the community coming and working together for a common cause. Um, we're excited to get the day started. Claro, pero yo digo, o sea, que más gente viene acá la primera hora para ya avanzar la gente más abajo, ¿no? So we're here for the uh, mega clinic. I'm really excited. There's a lot of people around. I just saw a line going all the way around the block of people, patients waiting to be seen. Uh, and there's a whole line of tents, Ministry of Health, the Medvita tent is here. So the energy is really high, so I'm pretty excited. And what's really neat about it is we've been to this community now three or four times to build stairs and one time to do a clinic. So we kind of feel like we know the people and we know their names and we feel a little bit more integrated now. So it's really interesting and really exciting. And we see the stairs that we built, they're dry now. We just, I just walked on them, it was awesome. The stairs we built. <laughs> so all the MedLife students are here in the, uh, from the mobile clinic this week. I'm excited to meet them. Uh, they've been going through what we're calling the poverty class. They're trying to teach them about sort of the core principles of MedLife, medicine, education, and development for low-income families. Uh, and the idea really is sort of experiential le learning. We really want them to have a hands-on experience. We want them to be talking to people living in poor uh, communities, living uh, in these conditions. We want them to learn about what they're missing in terms of medicine, what they need in terms of education and development. Um, and that's, that's really the hope of, of this week for them. Hey guys, so as you can see, there's a lot going on right now. We've got a ton of different groups involved here. And right now we're just trying to um, plan out, uh, iron out all the logistics and get everything set up so that we can start seeing patients as quickly as possible. It's great to have Nick here um, representing MedLife and um, kind of holding it down. And it's kind of a mess right now, but we're going to start seeing patients soon and get this thing on the road. So we've got a ton of people here right now. Carlos did a great job in, um, in communicating this clinic and way more people than we ex expected have showed up so far. So right now, all our volunteers, everyone working is, is working as fast as they can to get people through. This is triage right behind me. And um, we're, we're moving people through and it's, it's going good so far. So one of my goals out of the mobile clinic is I really want students to come and have a real key understanding of what sustainability really is. We can't just build a little clinic that we run in some silo and ignore everything else that's happening out, outside of what we do. We have to work with the institutions that are already on the ground. All these services, the, the identification cards, the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of the Mujer, these are all organizations that are working 365 days a year to provide services to the poorest of the poor. And our job as an organization is to work with them, try and get them to get into these communities, to provide the services that they're here to provide, to help create avenues into these communities and create bridges where there's gaps in services. That's what sustainability is really about. So right now we're outside the uh, dentistry, preventative dentistry, where the um, students, they're actually Peruvian dentistry students that are helping us here today. It's a new collaboration that we're working on with a, a dental school here in Lima. Uh, they're helping just do uh, fluoride treatments and preventative education. Unfortunately, there's a not a lot of preventative uh, dentistry that happens, especially in places like here in Pamplona. And sometimes, you know, teeth just a tooth just has to be extracted in those kinds of situations, which is unfortunate. Um, but our hope is to teach people about preventative head, uh, dentistry so that kids are more accustomed to brushing their teeth and have a long-term uh, kind of culture, I guess you would say, about taking care of their uh, dental hygiene. This is actually people waiting for an identification called a DNI. So with a DNI, you have access to certain resources, to, cl to uh, clinics, to schools, but a lot of the poor people don't get access to this. They don't have access. This costs just $10, and for some people, it's too much money. And so what we've arranged today is to have the organization, the Peruvian organization that runs this program, to come here and to offer this service for free. A lot of these people come from places far, far away from Lima, and they don't have those documents often and sometimes these people if they're in a large family they don't have ten dollars for every single member of the family to get the DNI card and so have you as you've seen down there below where we have all the doctors there's lines but there's nothing like a line like this and so what MedLife's about is not just about healthcare. we're not just about medicine 
the education and the development pieces to recognize the institutions that are already on the ground providing services and bringing those together, acting as a bridge. We're not paying them anything to be here today. We just said, listen, we're going to put this event together. We'll organize everything. And if you come, would you provide a DNI card to a thousand people for free? And they said yes. You know, I'm not a medical student or going to be pre-med or a doctor or any of that. I'm studying finance and accounting. But coming out here has been an absolutely amazing experience. I've learned so much about the people, the culture, the language that I never would have before. And it's been really fulfilling to come out here and help two, three hundred people a day, over a thousand with this mega brigada. And it's sad knowing that for every person that we do help, there's hundreds and thousands that we haven't gotten to yet. And none of this would be possible without volunteers like myself and the donations that MedLife receives. You know, I, we, when I go traveling, I'll visit places like the center of Lima and not even realize that all this stuff is out here. And it just kind of got me thinking that, you know, how many cities have I been to that I see the downtown and I don't realize that this is out here. And so I kind of just realized how big, it, well, I still don't realize how big it is really, but given me more of a perspective on how expansive this issue is. This whole experience like made me more aware of like what put me like more in direct contact with actual like poverty and interacting with people who live in these conditions. It kind of makes it more real and like it's different than like when you read about it in a book or in a newspaper or something like that. I feel sometimes as if it's less that we're helping them by just being here this week and maybe they're helping us in a way to understand um, how they live and how we can work together in the future to give them a more sustainable and lasting effect on their lives. With poverty, I think the more you see, the more you kind of grow out of that ignorance. And um, my role in poverty, I guess, is to understand it, to experience it, and then to bring awareness of that, to bring people out of ignorance. Because I think ignorance is the one thing that um, really kind of isolates a lot of the world from poverty and a lot of the problems that people have. And so I think the more you grow out of that ignorance, the more you realize that the life that's outside of the fantasy world in which you live in and to really see the plight of people across the world really and that your world is not just the one you live in but very much a collective, um, larger, um, larger environment with whole lots of different types of people living in different types of situations. Oh, no. No, 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 no. So we're wrapping up the day, all the doctors have left, uh, but we're going to inaugurate the stairs. Uh, the tradition here is to break a beer, so we've built three stairs now. Uh, originally this all started when we found out that Chais's daughter uh, was sick because she had fallen and had a traumatic birth and had problems with that. Uh, and that really was the inspiration to start that first stair project and from there we continued uh, and we're, we're looking to continue that process you know even even in other communities now uh, and so yeah we're going to inaugurate that right now there's the tradition here is to break a beer over the staircase so let's go check it out i think one of the, the major goals of why we do a mobile clinic right is because we want to get into a community we want to really look at the root causes of disease and in this case chais had a little girl and she fell here before there was a staircase. The, the girl was born in 26 weeks. She has lung issues, she has heart issues. So looking at that disease, we see what the real root cause of that disease is, right? It's a lack of something as simple as, as stairs, right? And that's why, really why we're here, it's because this little girl really showed us, taught us what the need of this community was. And also I think that, that this serves you as young students, as people that are gonna become doctors, lawyers, whatever profession you do, and what she said is that you can go home and remember this experience, remember that you can uh, commit yourself more to what we're doing and, and to come back and help this community, whether it's in healthcare or whether it's in stairs or whatever the need is of the day. Thank you.